Hello and welcome to another episode of Space Engineers and another glorious morning here in the valley and is a wonderful day to print a building. Now, something I did wrong about this design and I have to rectify it first. These welders are in the wrong orientation. With the welders pointing down like that, they would be great if you were just welding up a flat floor do it quite quickly. However, because the building is 3D, what's going to happen is that, say if I push these forward, it's going to get out to here. While the welder is right here, it's going to build this block, and then as it moves forward, it's going to grind into those blocks and stop. It would be the same if I also just extended it and drew it back slowly as well because the welders aren't just welding on one side of them, they're welding over here as well. And they'd weld things up before they can move past them. So what I need to do is actually rotate these welders so that instead of facing downwards, they're facing outwards. <sighs> Which is going to suck. I have to... Uh, move them around to do some stuff with them but we can get this done so horizontal pistons here and let's pop on out all the way to the end here we are going to grab the welders by the side with a landing gear on a rotor we're going to rotate them we're going to move them with a piston hopefully if we can get that set up and then we're going to reattach them with advanced welding plates which I think I need to grab stuff for the advanced welders. And I'll grab them out of the welders themselves. <laughs> Dunk. There we go. So, fully extended. Am I going to hit this tree? No. <laughs> Alright. We will... Uh, we'll come back a little bit here. Let's come back one of these so that I'm not so so far out there. Let's just bring this one back real quick. We are going to start this whole thing from the edge here. And we are going to start right in line with it, which will be this block. Okay. So I need to think backwards. We'll have a landing gear uh, facing obviously the other way around, so it's grabbing this. But a landing gear then a rotor, then a piston in and out, so that we can move the landing gear into position nice and slow. Then a piston up and down, so we can lower this by one. All on this contraption. Okay. Let's go up a little bit. So we can make room for an up and down piston. And then we'll come over. And now, thinking about where we're going to go. Let's see. Let's do right here. How about that down block out rotor landing gear. Good. Okay. That's good. This will be our contraption that we need to build up. And thankfully, because I had already been planning for this, I, uh, a little bit of jank here. Uh, I already pre-built this, or at least pre-grabbed my materials. Uh, we will rotor lock this bad boy. Turn this landing gear on. And now go to this piston right here. We're going to drop its maximum distance to really low. Up its velocity. And then inch its max distance forward until that rotor, no, the rotor, the landing gear grabs. Perfect. Done. Turn off the velocity here. Set a minimum distance, which will be the same. And we're good with that. Now, detach. Oh, a little bit of wiggle. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. 
So let's uh, share inertia tensors. And that should, should snap it back into position. Okay, good. Now this thing needs to rotate. Uh, rotating velocity. Uh, you are rotor locked. No oh, duh. Okay, wrong direction. We need to go to negative. So minus 90 degrees will be our rotor position. Rotate these into position here. Ba Boom. Wonderful. And lock it up. We'll also set the upper limit to 90. And I should snap it into position here. Wonderful. And now this guy can extend out maximum distance of 2.5. And that'll move them down a block. Because before, their tips were just touching the bottom. Now, they're, since they're lying down, they need to move, be moved down one block. Then from here... Not take that piece off, dear god. Let's move this back by one block. So we'll set this to 32... Uh, thir no, not maximum distance. So we'll set the minimum distance to 32.5. And we'll pull back. That'll pull it back one block, so we can get ourselves a little bit of space here to work with. Then from here, we shall corner and straight and corner. Then well pad, well pad, get everything fixed up. And you can see when I am near the well pads, 1.69 meters apart, their axes and walls are right on, so it's going to connect nicely. We just need to inch this forward now. So, 1.69 forward. Uh, we can do that from, from this guy right here. So, we'll go max distance, 1.69, and we'll give it a little bit of momentum as it inches its way in and I'm not going to touch it. Oh god, don't clang on me. Do not clang. Weld, baby, weld. Oh no, it's just about there. I thought it would be perfect. Set it to two. Okay, it welded. Oh yeah, it grabbed it. And here's the other clang-tastic moment. Switching lock. Turn off auto lock. Yeah! Okay. Oh yeah, baby. That is fixed. Well, I'll reset the maximum distance out to 35. Reset this minimum distance back down to zero. And uh, we're good to go. We have successfully corrected our bullshit that we did last time. Ah, <laughs> uh, absolutely beautiful. Uh, I want all of these pistons to currently actually extend, please. So, horizontal, all of you three, uh, go to one meter per second. Not negative one. Get out there. Make me proud. As, as long as we have it this way, with the piston, the welders focusing that way, as we drag them through, they'll weld up the whole thing. And now we can just uh, grind this down to reclaim our uh, stuff here. And this was never here 
That was how the thing was built the entire time. It was never a failure. <laughs> Uh, okay. The other thing we need to do before we get this started, and I'll just grab a whole bunch of armor blocks so I have some steel, is we need to go around and seed this a little bit. So the front is seeded, as in the fact that it has blocks that it can build. So we need to go and go through this projection here and set up the first level with just a ring of iron blocks that it will start welding from. And then once we're good, we can give this a go. Ho 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 ho. Okay. Uh, only other thing is I think I'm going to set the minimum distance on the first vertical, the minimum to be like 0 0.5, and I'm just going to raise it a little bit. Uh, maybe not that much, maybe 0 0.2. Just a tiny bit, because I found in my testing that if these aren't a tiny bit higher, the flat edge there will grind along the flat edge of the top, and it just bleh, it just becomes bad. But we should be good. Now we can go, and I'll talk about this in a moment. We can go to all of our welders for our printer, put them on, go to our horizontal pistons, and drag them back. And I think a nice, sh very slow, uh, combined with the three pistons, this will be 0.15 with the three pistons working together. That will get dragged across and should weld it up quite nicely. Now it doesn't need to go this far when I'm doing this horizontal, but doesn't really matter because sometimes I just won't be here and that's what the automation is for. So let's talk about the automation that I've set up and what we're going to do with that. We have the Izzy's inventory sorting mod. We've set it up with its auto crafting and I actually have stupid quantities of stuff in the base right now. Like I have 1.27 million steel plate seemingly I don't know when I built so many steel plate but I did so I set it to make me have one million if I ever fall below that make me a million steel plate and uh, it is currently doing such things you can just head into uh, so, so for example here is the program I just call it ordering for now because that's all I'm really using the inventory manager for um, I am getting a little bit of frame frame loss and sim speed issues because this inventory manager on such a large base, but that is okay. So there is an auto crafting do, 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 somewhere in here. Auto crafting, auto enable, auto dis, uh, auto crafting enable, auto disassembling enable, all good stuff. So I get disassemble some stuff because I just like, I don't need over a million steel plate at one time. If I have a million on hand, that's fine but it is doing its awesome things. Now, to assign the values, you put in this LCD with auto crafting key text. And then you go into the edit text and you just write it here. You just, you just jot down how much you want. So then, I think, can't remember right now, there's nothing in custom data. And, yeah, I think I can add other items into here. Like, I need some medical components, because this entire thing does have some uh, survival kits and stuff in it. So I wonder, can I just write in 
medical component. What will it do? It... It just yeeted it out of there. Okay. No. It won't like that. Let me... Turn off the script for a moment. Because my... My... My, my stuff here is being absolutely... Uh, taken over by it. Do I even have the silver? That is a really good question. Do I even have silver? I don't have silver on my base. Really? Uh, okay. I guess I don't have any medical components to be able to put in there. So, let's just turn this back on then. Oh, yeah, freaking stuck keys. But what this will do is that way, as this thing will, and it definitely will, start churning through steel plate super fast, it'll always try to keep a million in stock. And I don't know how it's going to react when it's trying to disassemble other things, but then all of a sudden this thing is yelling for steel plate, and it goes, oh shit. And then it needs to build some more. Like, say for example, let's go to power cells. Let's increase that by tenfold. Because why not? I have currently... Not solar cells. Where's power cells? Yeah, 1,000 power cells. Let's make it 10,000 power cells. See, it's waiting to be able to craft. Because it is currently in the process of disassembly. So let's see. Can we... Turn off disassemble here. And will it immediately go into crafting? Oh, I can also go assemble only and disassemble only. Ooh. Assembler without key of words will do both tasks. Let's just turn off disassembly. And recompile the code. Is it... Yeah, cleared the assemblers. And now it's going... Oh, snap! We need power cells. And threw them into production. Nice. Yeah, excellent. So that will move along. We're just about there. We got a tiny bit more time here. And uh, another awesome script by the amazing DF Prakash. He just... I make a, a video, and then this absolute legend that he is goes and says, Oh, hey, that issue you were having in the video? Here's a script that uh, completely does that for you. And I'm like, God damn it, you're amazing. <laughs> so we'll go over that in just a second here, as we are getting to the first bit of welding. Ah! So, oh, they've welded up the first bottom layer, and as the welder heads get far enough along, they will weld the second bit up, and that will make more of the projection visible, which then, as they move past, gets welded up. As soon as these weld heads get out of there, we'll turn off our HUD here, all that stuff gets made. Oh, beautiful. Ooh. Got some stairs already. I can get, sit in the seat and watch it go as a building appears around me. I mean, I really. At this point in a playthrough, God, I'm essentially playing on cre creative now. <laughs> uh, I mean, it's just like creative with a little bit of engineering in it. Oh, uh, yeah. Just watch this thing print. This is a perfect place to stand, too, because you can see the whole printer and the insides of the building as it's going along. Now, 
Unfortunately, I don't have like in a second computer and account and whatever the hell splits he does in order to get his um, Oh, if he gets these time lapses. I don't have the ability to do that. That would be a really cool time lapse to see this thing going er, 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 and just printing along. But no, uh, we'll have to just enjoy this scene here as I ramble. But back to that script that DF Prakash made. The point behind that script is that I was thinking like, oh, I'm going to have to move my welders up at a certain distance each time they go across. How am I going to do that? Well, he, he took a portion of his elevator control script, which I'm using practically everywhere because it's amazing, and ripped a piece of that things out and then repurposed it to do exactly that. So with the script, you feed it an argument of what you want the pistons to be set to in sort of a total overall length or you can add to their current length or subtract from their current length and the pistons will automatically adjust depending on what you do and there's so many different applications that i could see this being applied to because you just have the ability to say hey like not even just like setting maximum and minimums but just press a button and the thing will go to a specific length that would be amazing can you imagine setting up essentially a group of pistons to act as a crane where you could crane out drop a piston down with the landing gear on it pick it up and then do like a you know press a button to hit a timer that would say this piston go to this distance that piston go to that distance that piston go to that distance and then this whole thing just like moves all at the same time into a perfect like ballerie uh, ballerina of motion sort of thing and then just plops the box down somewhere else totally could see myself building that so as awesome and we're going to use it here because in a couple moments after it builds up the front stairs here it is time to build the next level however we're not needing to raise one block we need to raise three blocks as these guys built not only the block that they are on they built the block below and the block above so we not only want to move it one block can't do that one because it will, will impact not two blocks because I mean that would work but we could go up to three blocks up that way we're going to hit this current block that I'm on this next block and this block here Whoop, up here so we'll build this thing three at a time and it will be excellent so setup for that will be we will pop onto here turn all of our welders off let's go over to that script and take a look at it the program for raising the printer if we take a look at the script it is piston position by a df percussion and the arguments you can send to it are a set value plus a value minus a value or stop it just stops it so because we want to go up three blocks we're going to feed this plus 7.5 so we'll set up a button here we'll go uh, raising because that is the raising printer we will run with plus 7.5 enter and this thing inside of custom data you see the piston group name scripted pistons so, scripted pistons is our three or four, whatever we have there for vertical ones. I can now press this button, and they will move up three blocks in total, and then stop. And each piston is moving a little bit. It's not that one piston moves and the next piston moves. They're all doing it together. 
Oh, this, this is great. This is absolutely amazing. I'm thinking I should also set up another copy of these, change its name that it's looking for, and do it for the horizontal pistons as well. Because for these, right now, I'm just doing them manually. So horizontal pistons, we'll just set it to one so we can whip it out there real quick. Our welders are off, which is good. We will push this out until we are past the projection. Then, good, we can stop it here. We go negative 0 0.05 like we did before. Start to drill, uh, drag them back and grab those printer welders. Throw them on. And uh, the next three levels are being made. Lickety split. Now, I'm pretty sure I could go through and set this up with timers. And I might want to do that. The timer sequence would be... Imagine... Like, we, you always have to think of, like... Uh, when you're doing timer sequences, this is just sort of good velocity for it. Think about what your default state would be. Kind of like how you're doing, like, an autopilot. Your default state should be... At a connector locked. So, you should assume that position then think about what the actions you need to do from there. So if you're at a connector locked, you need to unlock. Here, let me just get the, a better view on the stuff here so you guys can uh, watch while I ramble. So if we're sitting with a, a drone at a connector nicely locked up, we need to first unlock, then engage autopilot, then track to waypoint one, track to waypoint two, track to waypoint three, and then say that's a route and we're coming back. Then you need to move down to your thing and relock. But we're always going to make sure that our, our, our end cap sets us back to that same default position so that way we can just repeat the cycle by calling back to the first thing. So for example with this we can assume say let's have our default state be that our welders are off and we're fully retracted. So the first thing we're gonna do is assume that that's after a successful pass. So there's stuff in our way. So we need to raise 7.5, extend a full distance. Then we need to turn on welders, retract slowly, wait once we get back we're back at our default position again so that would be the the process for this we'll need a timer to raise 7.5 then wait five or six seconds in order for it to do that then extend the pistons to full length then retract then turn on um, welders once we reach there and begin retracting that could be at the same step and then once we get back to the end turn them off turn off the welders alternatively we could just have the welders be turned off when we raise as well because they're beside each other we've come back and looped around and they're beside each other and could be at the same time but yeah whatever but that's the concept. That's how I would probably automate this thing. I'm not sure if I need to. Because I kind of want to baby this first time I've done this. With a large building size 3D printer. As if there are some problems, I want to catch them before the thing prints for hours when I'm not at the computer. But if I get the system down pat... I don't see why this wouldn't be a completely functional thing for me to just leave running and build a building. You know, you have a like even say a whole projection, projection for the builder, 
like for the welding contraption and a projection for the building. And so you build the welding contraption yourself. And then there's a, a projection because I've done my cascading nested projections. There's a projection on the welding contraption that is the building that it will build for you. So all you have to do is just build the contraption and then feed it resources and it builds this giant building for you. All right, so we got another pass done. We need to, again, do the procedure. How are we doing for... Still plenty of stuff. We will raise our stuff up. We will go in there and turn off those welders. And then go to the horizontals. And send them on out. Get them extended. I want to make sure that I, I catch them. Go to those horizontals as well. Make sure we're not going too far. As a boat. There, we'll do it. Ah, uh, there we go. Pull them back. A little far, but that's fine. Turn off the welders. And let them go. I mean, how... How simple is this? And look at, like, this building has been flying up already. I mean, the uh, entrance is all done. I just have to fill in the floor a little bit and then bring the uh, paver around to uh, fully flesh it all out. And then it'll just be all done. Easy peasy. Lemon squeezy. <laughs> now, a completely unrelated to uh, Space Engineer's thing, uh, quite literally a few minutes before I was going to record this episode, uh, <laughs> I smashed my door in a... I smashed my door. I smashed my finger in a door, uh, specifically my left hand's index and middle fingers. So, mmm, that was tasty. Very, very painful. <laughs> uh, it hurts to WASD. Oh my god. Oh, that hurts. God damn it. So, I might give my fingers a couple days of rest before I make more <laughs> videos. Um, we definitely need to do a another Xbox video as we have the new um, experimental mode on Xbox and dear god I hope so hope that soon they get limited mod support on Xbox all I need is Izzy's tracking solar mod I need it I need it in my life oh my god look at all the lockers that are being built But yeah, I, th I think they're fine. They're just bruised a little bit and cut open the skin. It's, it, it's not like a normal, like, like a, it's not like a crush. Like you would think that like a, like a normal hinge door getting like in the hinge sort of thing. It was actually like one of those closet doors that slides, but has like slide side to side but has like a little hole that you stick your fingers into and then slide my fingers were in the hole and the other part of the door like slides over each other and they slid over and caught my fingers in that little hole but that little hole has like metal edges in there sharp so yeah my fingers got sliced which is oh so painful huh <sighs> but this might be like goddamn uh, thumbnail material right here. <laughs> and I was thinking comedic title for this episode. We'll see if I actually do it. <laughs> it's like th building 3D printer go brr. It's like the money printer go brr meme. But I don't know if I'm that silly enough to do it. Oh my. Oh look at this. We're getting out to, uh... Oh, okay, that's an issue. The front portion of this didn't get built up. Because... The projection wasn't out there. We didn't make a, um... A scaffold for it to print this portion. Oh, that's good to know. I should have... I should scaffold this up... 
myself, and something thumped. What the hell thumped? Oh, this thing's caught up on something. Did we? Hello? Why are you caught up on something? See, this is why I wanted to baby this first one. Uh, how about we... Say a 3.8 and go 3.7. No, not 3.7. 3.9. One higher. Did that free you? What are you bound on? Okay, okay. Turn off the projection. And uh, let's see what's happening here. Oh, is it bound on the top portion here? Possibly. Oh, raising up might be the wrong thing to do here. I might need to lower it slightly. So how about we... Instead of 3.9, it was at 3.8. Let's let it let, let us actually go to 3.7. Do you start moving again? You're still caught up on something. Well, let's turn the projector back on, just in case I get it free here. But I think just jiggling this downward slightly is going to be what I need to do. So we'll go to vertical one again. 3.6. Current position is still 3.9. Why are you not moving? Ooh, something is all bound up here for some reason. What could it be? I guess... I have no idea why this is being all bound up. How about I go and give it an argument of minus one? The whole system to drop by one meter. No, it's still, still all bound up. Hmm. Is it, is it a horizontal issue? This is currently trying to pull back. I am not sure why this is getting all bound up here. My only guess would be to remove a couple of these blocks that might be affecting it. Like... Might get caught up on that catwalk there. No, it's replacing that catwalk really quickly. There's nothing behind it to get caught up on. Ooh, this is that. That's intersecting, and my health is very low. Dear God, those things hurt when you touch them. Okay, so let's turn off the projection for a second. Let's remove those stairs, because they seem to be intersecting. Okay, now we're good. Yeah, it was those stairs. We'll wait for it moves a little bit further, and then we'll slap the projection back on.
Yeah, it's getting caught up on this scaffolding. Okay. That is a little troublesome. Uh. Ow. Yeah, it's still this scaffolding right here. Is that in the way, though? Still. Yeah, no. Rebuilt it really quickly there. Damn. That's the problem, because this this thing's internals is like pure scaffolding. So this might be a long uh, systemic issue for this. The only other thing I can think of is to just speed up the horizontals. Give them a little more oomph. We shall... Go to the Regal, turn it off for a moment, clear that, clear that, oh now it's getting caught up on more than just that, oh man, this scaffolding man. That scaffolding, and more than likely this scaffolding. Come on, where else are you binding? Maybe it's because I moved into the um, thing around here with the vertical one here. I should have uh, repositioned it. But. Ah, this is why I'm trying to baby this first one. There's going to be some issues with the printing. And what I th think I might have to do is just sort of cut this thing out. And figure out why it is binding up. Oh, oh, oh there we go. That helped it get out. Oh, okay, okay. I can't outgrind these things. Printer welders off. Yeah, yeah, it's these blocks right here. This thing is trying to move downwards, but it shouldn't be at the moment. And the same on the other side. Okay, so horizontal, I need to stop you. So let's just zero it out. I need to readjust my vertical as this stuff is getting all bound up. There we go. Now it's free. Okay. Because what was happening was vertical is it was trying to go lower, but it shouldn't have. Ah. Okay. I'm going to just play around with this. This is going to require a little bit of babying for me to be able to get the right positions for everything, but it's functioning. We are welding up the building. And besides, the sun's going down. So that'll be it for this episode. It's a start, and by the start of next episode, I'll have this completely built up. Although I might give myself a couple days here to relax my fingers and let them rest and heal up. So just letting you guys know, my little wasad fingers are hurt. And it sucks because now I can't play games. I just have to like sit here and do nothing. Oh well. <laughs> I will figure this thing out, get it reset, get it working again. But that is going to be it for now. Thanks for watching. And good hunting out there, fellow space engineers.